ASEAN pulls a fast one over China. It has put the code of conduct talks in South China Sea in an infinite loop and China is getting desperate. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN is turning the tables on China in the South China Sea. Consider this. For several years, Beijing was the biggest giant in the South China Sea and despite earnest requests from the Southeast Asian nations, China was reluctant towards finalizing a code of conduct or COC in the disputed waterways of the South China Sea. But now that the US, Australia and India have entered the South China Sea and are challenging China's claim on it, China is desperate for a code of conduct, but the ASEAN seems to be putting off talks for a Beijing-sponsored COC for the disputed maritime region in an infinite loop. As per an SCMP report, China may be claiming to have made crucial headways in its talks with the ASEAN for a code of conduct, but regional experts feel that a COC is nowhere in sight. The Southeast Asian Clements, like Vietnam and the Philippines, are simply refusing to give in to China's bait for a code of conduct. They know that Beijing isn't really serious about making the South China Sea safer, and therefore, they are happy to delay the entire process. Emboldened with the enhanced United States Navy support and signs of a proactive Indian Navy deployment in this part of the world, the ASEAN is now looking to dictate terms in the South China Sea. Therefore, it doesn't come as a surprise that Beijing's ambitious plans to finalize a COC for the South China Sea by 2021 are fast becoming a matter of derision amongst regional analysts. Wang Thi Ha, lead researcher for political and security affairs at the ASEAN Study Center of ICS, Yusuf Ishak Institute Singapore said that even without the pandemic, the Dragon's hopes of concluding a COC by 2021 would be an improbable target, aspirational as ASEAN would say. Nevertheless, China is pushing hard for a COC in the South China Sea. Beijing even called up diplomats from the 10 ASEAN members in early August and begged for renewed efforts to negotiate a code of conduct during the said meeting. Last week, the ASEAN held a series of meetings with both China and the US, prompting Beijing to claim that negotiations were back on track. However, Huang feels otherwise. The lead researcher said that the meeting Beijing was referring to was only about how to resume the negotiations, not the negotiation itself. The South China Sea is therefore headed for a new and interesting normal in which Beijing would be the one pleading for a COC, while the ASEAN would procrastinate China's initiatives. Tectonic changes are happening in the region, and Beijing is no longer the biggest giant in the region as the Quad, an informal strategic alliance of India, Japan, the US, and Australia is emboldening the ASEAN to beat back Chinese aggression in the disputed waterways. With enhanced diplomatic heft and bargaining power, the ASEAN is compelling Beijing to make unprecedented concessions. Now, the ASEAN doesn't have to accept what Beijing gives it. Ultimately, the ASEAN might itself want a COC to formally push Beijing on the back foot but the Southeast Asian nations want to dictate their own terms in such a COC. A code of conduct for something as highly disputed as the South China Sea can hardly be egalitarian. At the end of the day, it will be about one side expressing its will over the other through a bilateral document. The ASEAN feels that it has an upper hand here and therefore wants to keep China on the edge. The ASEAN would want to zero down on a COC, but it would want any future declaration to be legally binding in accordance with the UN clause as against Beijing's vision of an unforeseeable COC based on its dubious nine-dash line claim that encircles almost the entire South China Sea for exercising maritime rights on historical grounds. Wang also said, I think there will be COC for sure if there is enough political will from both sides. But it will be settled somewhere around a set of general principles or some mechanisms of incident management. The battle between the two sides is therefore to secure a more favorable COC and currently the ASEAN seems to be winning the game. The ASEAN is mounting pressure on China now. With the Quad supporting the ASEAN, Southeast Asian nations are harassing Beijing by bringing up the 2016 South China Sea Arbitral Award and de-recognizes China's illegitimate claims in the South China Sea. The ASEAN members concerned with the maritime dispute are also shooting angry diplomatic notes at the United Nations in a bid to apply the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea or UN Clause in the South China Sea. For China, the pressure is becoming unbearable and as the tables turn in South China Sea, Beijing suddenly finds itself on the losing side.